I love Sesame Street because, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, I get to be the letter five and then I'm a pineapple <laughs> and then a chicken. And, and it's really like the Saturday Night Live for kids television. Welcome back to Puppeteers. I'm your host, Adam Krutinger, and today we have Cameron Garrity as a co-host back again. Hey, everybody. <laughs> and we have the honor of talking to the one and only Leslie Carrara Rudolph. Hello, Ooh. Leslie. Hi, I'm three and eight. <laughs> well, so uh, one of the reasons we wanted Leslie to come on the show uh, for everyone who's just tuning in is that um, what we always love about the puppetry community is um, the, the the willing exchange of ideas and sharing about everyone's passions. Um, and I also love finding out that for as fun as the characters that we see on Sesame Street and the Muppet Show are, um, all of their performers lead incredibly interesting joy-filled lives and um so leslie who performs abby cadabby on sesame street and her own characters lolly lard pop um we really wanted to just speak with you and have you come on and and share your joy and your wisdom and um pass down some of the great um things that you've uh, had passed down from some of your mentors so leslie welcome to puppet tears <laughs> oh, i love it and i love your podcast oh, cheers you. to puppet tears cheers cheers <laughs> Great Snoopy glass. I know. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Has, has, that, has that ever been a puppet show before? Have uh, they ever done Snoopy? the puppet episode? They, I don't think they have done. Oh, oh the, the musical. I bet they've done puppets with the stage Maybe. version before. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know. That's worth investigating. Yeah, that is. That would that, be wonderful. Be cool. Oh, yeah. 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 All kinds of shows I'm involved with locally. I always, hey, you want to do puppets uh, instead? Yeah, it'd be great. So. That'd be that'd be an interesting one. That'd be an easy one to do, I think. Yeah, I know they were. Um, I think somebody at the Neil was trying to develop a Sweeney Todd with puppets, which makes oh, yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's lovely. Oh yeah, that's actually, lovely. we got to see that. Did, yeah, that was we? at the fifty. Oh, how was oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was, was really in cool. Sweeney Todd twice. Oh really? I was the beggar oh. woman. Oh yes. So, yeah, that was great. My note was, I, and and in the stage production, you well, at least in ours, you have to go. She does the flashback, so I go to, you know, the young beggar woman self when she's being, you know, and um, at Judge Turpin's where she's being yeah. vandalized, and then then you go back into being the beggar woman, and so it's kind of a quick change because you have to wipe off all your hey ho we sailor boy makeup. <laughs> And go back and forth. And um, one my one note from the director was, could you wipe some of the dirt off of your necks so the blood shows up better? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Just so it pops more. You're too dirty. Like, oh. You'd be a great okay. Mrs. Lovitz, too. Oh yeah, I love that'd that. be super love funny. Do, that. do you? I know you started off. You started off doing a lot of uh, theater as well. Do you? Is that something you still ever interested in doing? Is, oh yeah, or? that's my. That's I fell into the world of puppetry through theater. Like yeah. I, um, I started in theater when I was sixteen. Um, you know, I think my first show was Godspell. And um, we, in our community, um, Walnut Creek, Pleasant Hill, the Bay Area, they had lots and lots of theaters. So, and they had lots of after school programs. And I started in the Parks and Recreation Department. Like, I'm very hyper. Yeah. So, I was in every after school program known to mankind. My parents <laughs> and my dad was an artist, like, just keep her outdoors, keep her moving. Cause I'm pretty much. I'm sure I'm ADHD. I say I'm ADHD TNT, yeah. which is explosive attention deficit disorder. So I was constantly creating and moving and making things. And then um, from the time, I think actually it was like 16 or 17, I was in a theater company called Fantasy Forum Actors Ensemble. And that was um, theater for young audiences, but it was musical theater and improv and storytelling. And it was an adult company. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's where I started really jumping in and out of characters. Um, I'd play a dog or something like that, or yeah. you know, play Pinocchio and everything. So it was costume, physical, a lot of physical comedy. And um, I learned to sing in character. You know, I studied voice, I studied opera. My first teacher was an opera. And I was like, I don't want to do this. And then I studied um, with Letha Wayne and Lloyd Carroll. And they were like jazz and um, musical theater. 
So, I mean, I, I have a, like my whole background. And so I spent 16 years in that company, Fantasy Foreign Actors Ensemble. And then um, through that time, I also was teaching after school programs and doing creative drama. And then um, also I had my own business doing um, kids' birthday parties and window painting. Yeah. Like I like to cartoon my characters before I go into them. Yeah. And so the puppetry that I did as a kid was like, you know, reindeers out of deer foam slippers. And, you know, if I was at a birthday party, I would perform everything, but then I would have these extra characters that were best served as puppets. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I, that's how I did it. My very first puppet job was the Muppets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's and good that was just at. like, yeah. yeah, there you go. Talk about being like, I, I, I'd done so much theater um, for kids, for young audiences, and I went to San Francisco State, and I started working with kids at risk because I found that for me, having I've had a very um, a lot of things happen to me as a kid growing up, and I was like, I call myself an escape artist, where I would jump into these characters, and for me, I when I didn't have control over the world around me. I would create a character that did have control wow. and that could be my form of resilience or my champion. Or if I was taking on something that I didn't feel strong enough, I always say Lolly has more confidence in me. I wouldn't even probably do half my shows if Lolly wasn't. So this is about me. We have to make this happen. <laughs> and so uh, I was doing a show called Life in Other People's Shoes and kind of touring with that. And it was like I would cartoon the character and there were shoes on stage. And then I would like go into the character, put on the shoes and stuff. I was touring with that, doing a bunch of, I did search for signs of intelligent life, I, mostly theater. I did parallel lives with um, Paula Pell, who writes for Saturday Night Live. And now she does, well, she used to, but now she, I think she probably still does and stuff. So I fell into puppetry through characters. Mm -hmm, yeah. So my first, Someone came from the Muppets. I had an HBO workspace special where they gave comedians and writers an opportunity to put stuff out. Now it's Comedy Central. Someone from the Muppets came and uh, my friend knew Kirk Thatcher and they were having a cattle call audition for female comedians who could sing. And I don't know. I, I don't even know. It's a miracle. I just kept, I know it sounds corny, but I just kept following my heart and my love for characters and my love for outreach. Yeah. And I just kept making things and creating things. And then I even wrote in my journal. I have way too many journals. Like so analog. Do you guys journal? Oh, yeah. I actually just started it. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I, I love it because you're just, em I just have to empty my brain because it gets full. Yeah. And um, so then sometimes I'll go back and I'll like, oh, wow. And actually, Lolly has her own journal here called mm. Dear Diarrheas. <laughs> oh, when your characters have journals and you're sick anyway long story short i um auditioned for the muppets it was several callbacks and we had to sing and do a monologue and were those um, with the puppet the singing in the monologue? well no like the very first oh gosh we had to prepare a monologue and sing and so my monologue was the wizard of oz because mm. <laughs> i felt well this is a monologue that shows characters <laughs> Yeah. And then um, they were taping us, and then Bill Beretta was there, and and I went to sing. He goes, "That's not necessarily, <laughs> Sari, sit down and tell me how come you're like this." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, and for people who don't know, the the Wizard of Oz monologue you do isn't just you talking as Dorothy. Oh, yeah. It's you doing every character and every sound yeah. effect and yeah. everything. It's, it's my it's favorite, incredible. you know, <laughs> yeah. movie right. ever. Yeah. I mean, I th it, it's online too. We can link to it. <laughs> Oh, I know. I think people have posted it like yeah, me. I, think, I do. Yeah. I do that at the drop of a hat. I'm like, oh, sure. You know, <laughs> um, it used to be when I used to street perform, um, mm. which I highly recommend. I used to, you know, in San Francisco, they had street performers. But that was how I would hook people in to like I'm going through a book. Oh, here's one, you know, um, to get people to listen and understand characters. But but then um, then they gave me a puppet. And they told me to count to 10. It wasn't even in a monitor. It was just, and I just did this. 
Like, mm -hmm. I don't know why or something. And then they had callbacks. And at my callback was Martin Baker, um, Alan Trotman, Brian Henson, Bill Beretta. I was like, and I, I was ill prepared in that I didn't wear diapers. Um, and, <laughs> and then I just, they had me do an improv scene with Alan and it was in a mirror. And then the next callback, which was a couple weeks, it was me and another woman from the Groundlings. I wasn't from the Groundlings, but she was Louisette, lovely, beautiful, talented person, and me. And then that day was just monitor day. So it was Bill teaching us how to cross and look in the monitor and go back and forth. And that was it. It was just like, I think it was from 10 to 2 with an hour break for lunch. And when they went to lunch, because I didn't have money for lunch, I had a tick lunch box with peanut butter and jelly in it. When they went to lunch, I practiced mm -hmm. in between. So when we came back, she was like, I'm sore. I'm like, bring it. <laughs> so, and then, then my very next day, man, this is puppeteers. I was constantly thinking I was going to be fired. But my very next day was on the lot and they had, um, us come in and I think they were brainstorming and they had a bunch of puppets. Am I talking too much? No, no, this is great. This is fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I've told this story before. So that's why I was like, oh, I feel like I've told this story before, but um, it was no pressure. It was uh, Steve Whitmire, Frank Oz, uh, Kevin Clash, Brian Henson, Bill Beretta, Dave Goals, Jerry Nelson, me <laughs> and the writers and i was like oh my god and it, people were looking around and I, it was i think they thought that i was an intern or they couldn't figure out why i was there and um <clears throat> bill knew he says oh this is leslie we're gonna kind of help her you know be part of it and i, I was the only female <laughs> And then they were, you know, picking up puppets and improving, and they were talking about creating a character um, for the space part that would have a brain, mm -hmm. uh, just a brain possibly. So um, I, I carry things in my purse that are interesting, and I just happened to have a plastic brain that was bubble gum was in it, and I ate out all the bubble gum, but I put, I, I kept my leftover ideas in it that I wasn't in this little plastic brain, and that was in my fish purse. I carried a fish purse for a long time. This is Gil. <laughs> and so I had the brain in my fish purse, but I also had the screaming axe that, in my purse, that if anybody grabbed my purse, my fish would scream. Um, you know, just kind of like my own personal alarm. Mm -hmm. And so they said, if we just had a brain, I go, I have a brain in my fish. And they just looked like it was the first thing I said. <laughs> Great first impression. So I went when I went to grab the brain out of my fish, I, I have a brain here, but it wasn't this big. So if I went to grab the brain out of my fish, the fish screamed, and I just handed it to Kevin, and he just looked at me like, what the hell? You know, it was bad. But I, I, that was... I just kept staying, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was kind of my first introduction to that team. And then every day yeah. I showed up on set, um, Bill had said that he was going to train me, but they didn't have time. So they would just throw me into these situations. And all I had was that one day of monitor training. Wow. Wow. And then, and uh, <laughs> now, I know you mentioned that you would, during your lunch break, you, you would pr make sure to to continue practicing. Did you feel yourself like struggling with it or did it come naturally to you? What, what was that process of, of learning the performance? Well, I, the here's where I think it's good. Like, like my, like I say, my love for characters has mm -hmm. led me to my love for, you know, my dad wanted to be an animator for Disney. So I loved cartooning and creating and writing characters. I love the Muppets. I collected frogs, you know, um, frogs and dogs. I mean, Ralph and actually Robin and Rolf are two of my, favorite Muppets ever. So I, I felt like when you have nothing to lose, you have nothing to lose. And I think if I knew more about puppetry, I probably would have been more nervous, mm -hmm. but I thought I was going to be fired. I'm like, this is a miracle that I'm here. Like I had literally written a wish in my journal 
about a month before saying, I wish, cause I'd read the Muppets um, works book and I've never felt like I could fit in. And Hollywood really wasn't my thing. I wasn't into, I love theater and, you know, I just happened to be there because of, there, there's weird circumstances that took me there. Um, so I just thought, well, this is like a paid education. I'm gonna learn as much as I could. So what I did do was, yes, I got a monitor set up. I had a dressing room right next to Jerry Nelson, mm -hmm. who is my mentor, you know, became my, literally he took me under his bat wing. Um, and I think it would have been the same age as his daughter would have been. So I think he I had that energy that he liked. And um, so I would just practice and I would bring puppets up and I would practice and practice and in between. And um, Drew Massey would come up and help me like, um, you know, Johnny K didn't get to the Muppets, John Kennedy until like the second season. Um, but, but it was great. It was like a master class. I watched everybody. Everybody had a different style. Mm -hmm. You know, I resonated with Bill's style because Bill also came from acting. And, you know, I, some of them were, you know, the, the mouth, some of it was subtlety. And it was really, you know, I just studied. And plus we had different actors every week, you know, and you could see who had entourage. It was just like a feast of character studies. So, yeah, I practiced nonstop thinking mm -hmm. uh, surely i mean i have all most of my puppeteers kind of came on that too. <laughs> but in a good way it's so for some reason i was so grateful that i didn't have time for it to wash over me i knew that i was living a dream mm -hmm. and i think gratitude really helps you balance whatever fear you have yeah. um and plus you know i've had a lot of loss in my life so I always believe you only live once a day. So if this is my last day on earth, you know, well then I'm like, I'm going to just let her rip, you yeah. know? And um, Brian picked me to right hand him as Thor, God of thunder. And it was Thor gets a library card. Yeah. And, um, and he, it was him and like, it was Bill's character. I feel right. like it was like, Poseidon or something. I mean, it was another yeah. god. He was fighting yeah. another Zeus. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think it was Thor and Zeus. Anyway, so he picked these library books, and my hands weren't big enough to hold on to them. And it was like, oh my gosh. And I go, um, I can't hold on to the books. And he's like, Thor wouldn't read thin books. I'm like, oh. And then, <laughs> then the, the the lighting guy came over. The special effects Fred Buckholtz came over, and he goes, here's your goggles because there's going to be pyro. And I'm like, what? <laughs> there's gonna be pyro and then if there's pyro I, mean, I want a little bit more than goggles i think <laughs> right yeah. you know, remember under these flammable puppets and then and then and he goes okay go and there was no rehearsal and brian was just like <laughs> smashing and i'm holding on for dear life he's smashing me into the books books are falling fine i go is this some sort of a sick hazing and he's like well yeah actually yeah. it is and i'm like oh all right well at least i know <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my god, so crazy. But yeah, so I just kind of hung in there and I watched and I also um Olin, I can't remember the lighting guy's last name, but I knew the first name. I remember when um I I watched everybody work. You know, I listened to the, the sound and um you know, the sets. It was just like this world, you know. Um and I remember when Olin, I was doing Dorsey, it was Muppets Real World, and I actually had another character, an angry rocker lesbian. So, Spamala, pig with hooters, an angry rocker lesbian. <laughs> Not that there were any other women in between. But I was like, you guys have issues. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I remember when I was performing, and because I got to know the crew, and I took notes, and I was watching how everything was done, Olin came up to me, and he goes, Leslie, when you do your monologue, as um as Darcy, right? Come come into the light and and do the do the work and say what you're going to have to say. And then after you're done, step back out of the light. And he goes, and the light's gonna put you in darkness. And then you can look down. And I remember that was like, wow, you know, that's 
that's the beauty of puppetry. I mean, it's everybody is collaborating. We're all collaborating with each other's spirits. But, you know, there's moments that we can find when we're not just in, you know, you really, you know, acting is reacting. A lot of times we spend so much time in manipulation, but you don't, you know, that's why I'm, you know, for me, I had to learn the manipulation, which was very frustrating. And Dave Goals, he goes, it's going to be seven years before you're any good or even begin to be good. And he was right. I mean, I was just on a, you know, I just watched and practiced as much as I can. But those little moments that when you take in and watch and listen um, can elevate your work in ways that you didn't realize. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, even, you know, you you mentioned how much character driven drove you. And I imagine like the construction of the puppets, <laughs> for instance, probably helped you find that character maybe quicker or channel, ch channel that quicker because you already have the form you have, you know, for Thor versus a small frog versus whatever, you're going to be able to get into it and sort of feel it around. But that's just one of the artistry, the bits of artistry that's happening on a set. It's not just the, like you said, it's not just the puppet construction, but it is the lighting, it is the sound, it is all these different things, the camera, cameramen who are all collaborating to to make it all happen. So it's great that you were able to kind of find that out early, because um, I think some people overlook that. It's true. I think, and also, like I built my very first Muppet um, and in the workshop there. And I made mm -hmm. friends, you know, I would go in and I watch and I met Paul Hardis and Heather Henson was working on the show. And she says, I'm going to do a puppet slam. And I go, I don't have a puppet. You know, my puppets are, she goes, we'll make one. I'm like, okay. And <clears throat> I started, you know, I do a lot of sculpture, like, oh, here's one of my pipe cleaner sculptures. That's this so is cool. Madame Velveta. This is because um, Leslie's supposed to do a kid's book but she keeps forgetting to work on it. I'm every year. I'm like, Oh, it's a Halloween book. I'm going to do all in pipe cleaners, but I've got her. Oh, that's such a good idea. That's and awesome. Yeah, I, I do. I'm sorry. I'm totally segueing now, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, my, my um, Lolly's twisted tails. Yeah. You know, I have Lolly and pipe cleaner. Actually, she actually trends like her from pipe cleaner into puppet works really well. And so yeah. I'm working mm -hmm. on a couple ideas for that i just did some little tests and things and i have Gordon. i bet you I bet you get sponsored by some sort of a craft store to do something like that i do i, uh, I want to reach out there's two sponsors i want to reach out to and I, I i wish i could do that one would be michael's or some craft store sure. um for lolly's twisted tales and the other would be for here's granny dot I'm holding wax lips right now, children. Um, <laughs> is uh, Peppers Farms for my radio show oh, yeah. Yeah. podcast? That'd be great. Because I I don't remember, but Peppers Farms does. And then for <laughs> obvious reasons, uh, this. Right? Oh yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> so I was like, oh my god, Milano cookies, come on, Peppers Farms. Lolly Pepper. could be like the poster girl for <laughs> cookie eating. Would those figures kind of work for stop animation as well? Because the yeah. wire? Is, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, my God. No. Um, so check out Lolly's Twisted Tales. I've yeah. done a couple of them. Um, and then I've done some celebrity ones. This this one's for Ryan Dillon. He loves Rosanna Rosanna Dana. I put a little piece of lint in her hand. But I've done, like, there's a stop motion of Bette Mittler um, and Lolly. Hello, Lolly. <laughs> they're really short because you know mm -hmm. how long they take i just shoot them on my camera right. but i also was hoping the night before hollow scream if i was going to make all the characters for the book then i think what i might do is it's already written out as a poem but it seems like it lend itself to a nice song and so then i probably do a stop motion song to go with it i mean that i think that's what happens with my ideas my ideas get ideas mm -hmm. and they keep going so anyway back to um the Muppet Workshop, I really liked the carving of foam because I like I like sculpting and things like that. So which you really shouldn't give a novice a, a turkey slicer, electric turkey slicer. <laughs> That's another puppeteers. I slice my <laughs> I slice my tendon with a utility blade. Oh. Make oh, I know. Awful. Sorry guys. No, that's no. okay. That was making a, a staff for Gandalf's CSI Middle Earth. 
this, um, it was uh, Josh Gad, who's now very famous. Um, <laughs> I was in his sketch comedy group and I also would do the props and costumes. And that day I was making, a, I was multitasking and I just put a fresh blade in and I wasn't paying attention. I'm like, where'd it go? And I looked down, it was in my thumb and it was like, oh. <laughs> terrible. But um, because I couldn't feel it, I still did the show that night. I went to emergency, They, the, the surgeon never came or called in. So they put a couple stitches in oh my gosh. and Lolly was the through line. and. So I just went with Lolly and then I went back to the emergency the next day. So <laughs> I just want to jump on that for a second that uh, about Josh Gad. Uh -huh. I, I met him a couple of years ago. They filmed the movie here in Buffalo and I was actually Great. in the movie as well. In the, what? In the yeah, what in, movie? It was Marshall. Oh, you know what? I haven't seen that. And I, you know, I, I mean to see that because that's yeah. his serious role. And, and I remember you telling me at the last conference, and you actually show you pulled out of. Actually, that's how I first found out that you knew him because you pull out your phone. And he's like, "Oh, you want to see a picture of my buddy Josh in a Bigfoot costume?" Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, okay." And then you show it to me. I'm like, "Oh, Josh Gad." I'm like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. And I, and I mentioned to him that I saw him in a book. <coughs> oh my God! What did he like, say? Huh? He's like, "Oh, did I tell Leslie?" He said, "Hi." Oh yeah. <laughs> It was pretty quick. He was, I, I think it was, it was after the, one of the shots, and I could tell he, he just wanted to <laughs> go back to his room and relax for a little bit after a long day. I was like, I Yeah, was well, I just time. saw Josh last week, and I go, Josh, you know, because I, I was like, listen, I'm, I'm doing this cabaret, and I probably shouldn't say anything. Moonlight Madness, woo, which is what I'm doing cabaret for Halloween that ironically is scaring me. Like, why did I say I do this? That's another thing I do. I say yes and ask questions later. And then I just force myself to do it. I'm like, oh God, what was I thinking? Um, but yeah, Josh is great. And the I met Josh actually, um, there was a thing called the Actors Lounge in Los Angeles. And it it's kind of like a poetry slam or a puppet slam, yeah. but it was based on a poetry slam where people would get up and do spoken word pieces. And then it was an offshoot of that where it was basically actors and you know, getting up and saying, look, I want to, you know, I'm not doing anything, but let's rehearse this thing and let's work on this scene. Yeah. And so I did this one piece that I wrote for Lolly and I a long time ago, and it was based on something really heartbreaking. You know, one of the things when you do the, and I'm sure, you know, when you do outreach and work with kids at risk, you see and hear things that you can't unsee and hear that are heartbreaking. And, um, and kids tell me things, you know, and you have to provide light in that moment and let them know they're heard and that you love them. And so this was based on something without going into it, which is heartbreaking, that I this child I carry with me to this day. And I always think, well, you know, did I do the right thing? You know, I ha it was I had to report something and so but I never got to see him again and hug him again so Lolly I carry this child with me going like you know what and it's a beautiful monologue and a song about Lolly saying you know I'm not even real you know and you're real because we have to believe in things and that song that I do it's kind of like our anthem now believe my friend Barrett wrote for me I go Barrett I go into hospitals and I am I doing the right thing am I balancing the darkness with light and I, and that's probably the, that is the core of everything I do. Like I made up, um, you know how Sesame Street and everybody has STEM, science, technology. Yeah. I made up something that I'm hoping to start some clubs all around the, oh, Paul says I can't give it away. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I have a certain acronym yeah, that I use and mm -hmm. I based everything that I do based on those principles. It's kind of like the principles of a service learning project, mm -hmm. right? So you find out the humanity of the situation, how you're going to help it and things like that. And I use that principle for Becky Ray. Um, Becky Ray's kidney. Do you guys know that? Oh, yes. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. That is the most that's the, what I'm most proud of. Like the way the puppet community came together and saved someone's life. Yeah. Like that was incredible. Like Becky's like, I, you know, I've been on dialysis 12 hours a day, every day for three years. And this is my last year. And, and you're like, what? I don't think people know, you know, and we 
put together. We got, you know, Bo got involved. I go, look, we have no resources. I have miles. I'm going to dress these Milano cookies like kidneys and we're going to land on your doorstep. And, you know, um, people showed up with lighting packages. I mean, Z, everybody, everybody pitched in to make this, you know, this kidney documentary. And Becky, we put it on YouTube in September. And by January, she had a kidney donor. And it wasn't even anybody that knew her. So. That's unbelievable. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's the puppet community. That is. You know, yeah, at its best. Okay. I I feel like I'm blabby cadabby. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, I want I want to go back to uh talking about theater a little bit. Because uh, um it's kind of cool. Uh, gospel was actually my first musical I ever did as well. When I was oh, 16 did, years what, old. What did you sing? Oh gosh. Oh, I didn't sing anything. <laughs> no, I actually um my wife was in the show. Uh look, we were 16 at the time. That's when we started dating. Um, that's why that, that, that's actually why I started doing theater at all, just to spend more time with her. And she did, um, did she do all good gifts? I think I think she did all that. good gifts around. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, did she, day by day. Ironically, actually, she's in a show actually right now in this very second. She's doing Pump Boys and Dinettes. I was in that show. Oh really? Oh yeah. I did Retta Cup. That's what she is. She's Retta. <laughs> yep. Your wife and I. <laughs> yeah, oh, look at that kindred that's spirit. Great. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did Pump Boys twice. Yeah. Oh, really? Great oh, wow. it's yeah. oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally, it's literally going on right now. She yeah. <laughs> She's singing Be Good or Be Gone and I yeah. Need a Vacation is one. Oh, of I love favorite. that one. Yeah, I yeah, need yeah. a vacation. <laughs> yeah, it's right. a great one. yeah, it's so funny because actually the, the day before I no, the day I was going to see that show, I just said to her, I was like, I need a vacation. I didn't even know the song or anything. I just said, I said, I need a vacation. And then she started singing the song to me. I was like, What's going on? Yeah, <laughs> it's a great song though. That's oh, awesome. I love that song, and yeah. I did that. Yeah, once you do it, you you wait for that word, and then you just go into it. Yeah. <laughs> right, you go into it. Yeah, but but again, I wanted to get onto some theater stuff because I feel like there's a lot of people um, who now um, get to puppetry through the theater track because of shows like Avenue Q and Hand to God, and there's so much more, uh, at least uh, in mainstream puppetry in theater, and I feel like a lot of people are going through it that way. So like, um, Holly, how, how, when you were doing theater. How many like shows did you do before you started doing puppetry? Like how many different well, productions have you been in? Oh, quite a bit. And like and and theater, you know, I, I just think theater should you you shouldn't think puppetry and then theater. Do you know what I mean? I mean, uh, sure. I mean that's just me. I mean, okay, Avenue Q had a puppet, and mm -hmm. the Hand of God had a puppet, but. Theater, I mean, it's characters, right? Oh, absolutely. So, um, oh my gosh, I did, um, well, I did tons of theater. I mean, I in, when I was with that theater company, I played everything from Snow White, um, you know, a dog, uh, Pinocchio, mm -hmm. uh, um, a reindeer. See, it's like, it's cute. I mean, I did, just through the theater company, we did like seven different shows a year you know, mm -hmm. touring. And then I did, um, oh my gosh, I can't even, I did Chorus Line twice. Um, uh, Maggie at the ballet. I did um, Little Shop of Horrors. I played oh, Audrey. Um, I did, um, well, I was in um, Beach Blanket Babylon, which is the longest cabaret show in theater history, actually, in San Francisco. That was my first, like, professional job where I got paid I played Dorothy and Madonna. Um, it was crazy. I would be hooked up to a Peter Flint in a flight harness, and I would fly over the audience, voguing wow. as Madonna, <laughs> and come back and marry Elvis every night, um, <laughs> like you do. And then I, like you do. And then I started writing because I was doing so many shows for kids. And then also after school programs and writing my own shows, mm -hmm. then I got asked to start writing for adults. And this one company, this one theater says, let's see, you've been in all these different shows. Do you have characters? Do you think you could write a show for adults? And then that's when I started my first show, Life in Other People's Shoes. But my very first character I ever wrote was Myrtle Myth. And it was it, um, a lot of, I've lot, had a lot of loss through the AIDS epidemic. And we did a thing called Celebration for Life, which was raising money for um, HIV. Um, and they said, Leslie, we want you to write something funny. And I'm like, 
there's nothing funny about this. You know, like I, 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 we were, we were losing one of, you know, I've lost so many people. And so, um, I remember seeing this character out front of the Kmart who was wanting people to sign petitions to quarantine AIDS patients. Mm. So people wouldn't talk and like, she's like, you shouldn't, they shouldn't be allowed to work in public places in case they sweat. I, I was just like, it was so horrible. I literally, so what I ended up doing was like, I created a character called Myrtle Myth every myth about, you know, Myrtle had a product for, yeah. you know, the hula guard, which is like, she walked around in a hula hoop with suspenders. She wore a, a wetsuit, which was the body condom. And, and I was just like, so <laughs> I was like, I, I tacked the satire of it all. Right. And I, that's when I realized how powerful writing and comedy was. And as far as like the puppetry at that point, it was, like I said, when I first realized that I loved puppets is like, they are the, for example, Lolly and I have a relationship with each other. So I don't, you know, and if I, if Lolly's talking, she's out in front of me, you know, I never put her next to me because that's distracting, you know, um, it's not a, we have a relationship. So, and then when I had Granny Dot, I needed to do a scene with her, but I used to do Granny Dot myself. And I was like, well, I need it. So so for me, the puppetry is all about the storytelling. Um, when I did Wake Up Your Weird and there was that whole bullying section, um, I didn't want to identify a bully because all of us get emotionally bullied and bullied by different things. So that was all in shadows. Yeah. So we never saw the bully's face. We saw their silhouette. And so people could project those things. So that's where I think puppetry is at its best in theater, yeah. you know, as that storytelling tool. So then, but I didn't really fall in love with puppetry until Pam invited me to the O'Neill. And then I cried <laughs> so hard because I was like, I'm just now seeing this. <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't even know there was another world out there because I didn't have any, there was, no pup. I had to do this all by myself. Yeah. Like I didn't now there's so many resources mm -hmm. for people to go online, how to make, you are awesome. You know, how to make puppets. The fact that you're making the world smaller by people learning all these things. So for me, I, it wasn't until I was in my, you know, late twenties and thirties that I didn't even know any of this stuff. And when I got there, I was like, I don't know anything. <laughs> You guys are amazing, you know? Yeah. So now I'm, I'm a beginner again, which is exciting. Yeah. So does that answer like the theater thing? I always feel like the character has to come first. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I guess also I was talking more so about just some your experience in it. I, I guess to go off from that, I'd also ask them, um, do you still see yourself auditioning for any musicals? I know you do your, like cabaret shows and whatnot. Yeah. But do you see yourself going to audition again for to, to be in a live I would stage love musical to. Oh, i would love to it's so hard schedule wise is that what it is that's the main thing yeah. like i really loved um well i love the play that goes wrong i would love to be in that because it's physical mayhem I see that so bad. And 39 I steps i thought was great i really loved um uh oh my gosh I actually sang a song from it in my last cabaret because i loved it so much right hand man um something rotten Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was a really strong, like the female part in that. Right now, um, because of Sesame Street schedule, and um, we can't. You, know, if I book something or if I have to go somewhere, I can't commit to anything. So, mm -hmm. what I love about cabaret is it's theater. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, but I can also like tell my stories, mm -hmm. and um, and I used to like I did many years under a gay bar in Silver Lake, Casita del Campo. I mean, I've been doing, yeah. like Lolly's been around way before um, Abby, you know, I was, and I had a show that I wrote um, that was at the um, El Capitan Theater in Hollywood um, called The Wahoo Wagon, it was before Avenue Q had puppets on stage and stuff. Yeah. So, um, but I can't because of my schedule, but also mm -hmm. if I did, Right now, my mom is the light of my life, and my pop got his wings. So mm -hmm. every time I have time off, yeah, I go see her. You, you know, I, that time, I, yeah. yeah, she's. I, 
I, it's just, my family is super close. Mm -hmm. And so theater, if I was in a show and then it would take away. So as long as my mom is still with me, I think yeah. I just kind of go home like a puppy. <laughs> Cause this, I, I, one more question on that too, then uh, like, what would be your like dream role that you haven't done yet? Would you say in a mu theatrical musical on stage? Oh, Oh, that's a tricky one. Well, yeah, <laughs> when I was growing up, because I was obsessed with Carol Burnett, I loved Once Upon a Mattress. Oh, um, that's a good you know, one. I did oh, search yeah. for signs of intelligent life, and it nearly killed me. Um, yeah. And that kind of changed everything for me. Like, the writing was so brilliant. <laughs> um, Parallel Lives with Paula Pell was probably my favorite thing I did. But, um, well, I really would like to do something rotten, but, oh, my gosh, um, I'd like to revisit Sweeney Todd, maybe, yeah. as oh, Mrs. Yeah. Lovett would yeah. be great. But, yeah. oh, my gosh, there's so much great theater out there oh, now. There's so much yeah. good new stuff, too. Yeah, oh, my God. Evan, dear Evan Hansen. Like, I, I saw see that, that so twice. Oh, you did? Oh, my God. It's coming to Buffalo in a couple months, and I may have a connection to get myself some tickets, <laughs> even though it's already right. sold out. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work it. If you're listening, I, buddy, you know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, he, <laughs> he might. No, actually, I actually think he has. I think he has. It's it's yeah. 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 It's, I, I don't know. I just, I guess I love theater. Yeah. You know, I, I feel, I'm so grateful for Sesame Street. I mean, I mm -hmm. lo love it. I pinch myself every moment I'm on set. But to me, I'm performing there, too. <laughs> like, I get on set, like, ah! You know, um, <laughs> theater I love because you're, in the moment and everybody is feeling immediately and it's like mm -hmm. planting a seed in someone's heart mm -hmm. and right now like one of the favorite things that i do right now ever was there's two one is this new show i wrote called the oz and you mm -hmm. and i tour to schools and i talk to them about the power of characters and how everybody has a lion a tin man and a scarecrow and you know we all to find our truth, our home. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I do cartooning and puppetry and singing and poetry. And I'm like telling kids that they're their own resource for me. And so I wish I could do that more. Like if I had a break, I would just do that in every school because yeah. even if you reach one kid, but kids today, I mean, I stand in front of them. I'm like, here's this crazy weird lady, you know, but I feel like I'm filled with unicorn blood because you're like, I'm going to give you an app. No one's, you know, it's absolutely free. You can download it at any time. You can access it, you know, and, and everything comes out of it is no one's ever seen before. <laughs> and they're like, what? I go, I know. It doesn't occur to kids that they can pick up a pencil yeah. or create something or write. I'm like, you know, Lin Manuel used one of these. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that I really love. And then my radio show podcast, if I had a dream show, that I could do. It's kind of like Prairie Home Companion, but in my perfect dream world, I would get in this art truck, my joyride truck mm -hmm. with Lolly and Granny Dot and people and have an artist next to me. And this is like my dream show. And then we would set up in a city or, you know, for about a couple weeks, I get to know everybody and we would put on a radio show and we would feature the artists in that and storytelling granny dot would go to a senior home and talk to people mm -hmm. and interview them so that and lolly's radio played it we have that podcast um when i can which i haven't been able to do i do live shows at um art house astoria mm -hmm. which is a um art school that i volunteer at in queens and the students are in the shows um, we won um, an award like an earbud award for episode nine i think it is the sweet tooth mystery Okay. And it's literally a puppet show on the radio. So we have a band, um, the the Red Hot Lemon Heads, which is Lolly's <laughs> band. And then the kids play the different parts and we do puppetry. They do puppets live on stage and then Lolly. So check that out. That's Lolly's radio play date. Plug, plug, plug. Oh, yeah. yeah. We will put that up in our um, on the website. Yes. The show notes. Yes. So I think so. The, I think there's theater I'd love to do, but there's also I just love creating that theater that highlights other people's gifts. Yeah. So, well, and it sounds like too, you know, and this is something that um, I know Ronnie Burkett has talked a lot about lately and not to name drop or anything, but um, I love him. <laughs> he's wonderful. He's I okay. Also love him. 
Uh, <laughs> but no, what, what's so great about it's sort of his new um, thing that he's really focusing on is appreciation of the audience. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, as you've described, you know, you're, you being able to feed off the audience as a performer, um, whether it's in a traditional theater space or when you're going to a hospital room with Lolly or Abby or, or whoever, um, and really creating that that connection with the audience um, seems like as much as you're saying performance perform or er, uh, character 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 you're also saying to us audience audience like you seem to have a yeah. real love and appreciation for who you're playing to i won't perform <laughs> here's the thing like well i'll perform anywhere you know just to make someone's day i'll go out of my way to be ridiculous yeah um but i always say it's not about me it's through me Mm -hmm. And I go through this process with every show of killing the ego. <laughs> like, <laughs> ring, ring, ring. like, so, um, for example, I have an idea, but if I, if, if it becomes about me, then I won't, then I'm miserable. But if I switch over and think about, well, what is it that, I, what is the gift I want to give? What is it that I want to say? What, a, what about this makes it fun or unique? And once I let the heart take over, but yeah, it's always, it's always through me. If mm -hmm. it's about me being on stage, I'm miserable and I won't do it. And I'm so mean to myself, <laughs> you know, I'm just like, I'm not good enough. Huh? Uh. But like for this show, Moonlight Madness, my friend says, well, you want to do a Halloween show? And I go, I have an idea. Yeah, why not? And then once I did, it was like, I just realized I'm not really a Halloween person. I don't, there's no Halloween music in it. I like dressing up in the weird stuff and I love the candy. So I was like, oh my gosh. And then I had this idea. So I was like, oh my God. And I, I think I had to surrender and keep going back to why was I going to do it in the first place? What was the idea you wanted to share in the first place? And sometimes I think that's what helps you get out of your head and into your heart. But yeah, I always think about the audience. Otherwise, why would you do it? Right. You know, I mean, I perform for Newhart all the time. You know, and he gives me, you know, love, unconditional love for everything I do. But yeah. So and Newhart is your best. dog for, for yes. the show. I don't know. He's in the other room. He's usually at, at my feet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, one of mine was going to almost make a guest appearance too, possibly. So we'll <laughs> oh, we could do that. Oh, geez. <laughs> Newhart, Matoto. I think Paul's kind of sequestering him. No, he, he would want us me to throw the ball constantly for his big obsession. So. But another thing I want to talk about is uh, you as an artist. I, I've seen uh, some you post some beautiful paintings and other type of work as well, and I've seen it on your website. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, well, my dad is actually. I have like a whole, like you should a whole shelf. Yeah. Um, well, I see that with that painting in the background there. Is yeah, that I have. Well, that was just weird. That was like, that was instead of mushroom cloud, that was a cloud mushroom. Mm -hmm. Um, but then like, well, here's my, I don't know if you guys can see, like, here's my to-do list for, uh, this show. This isn't mine, but then I have like all these artists. Here's my dad. Woo! Um, but yeah, there, here's some stuff. I, I just love, well, my dad's name is Art and, um, and he wanted to be an animator for Disney. So um, he moved the whole family down late in life um, from Tacoma and started over and went to Cal Arts. And um, so I just grew up with always having things to create and do artwork. And my mom is an artist in her own right, because I think probably your moms were too, you know, when they, oh, new heart came. Hi, baby. <laughs> um, I think that what they do is my Toto. Um <laughs> My mom, like, you know, when, the way she would set up shelves and everything were like little scenes, you know, when, you know, they, we decorated for every holiday. So my mom, unbeknownst to her, were creating worlds. So as a young kid, I was also changing the, the scenes that my stuffed animals were in. And my dad, we always had art around us. So um, for me, I thought, I'm my pop. He said, be glad you have your own style, you know. Cause I was like, it's like everything looks like a frog. <laughs> and he goes, but that's your, that's your style. And some people, yeah. you know, 
go through life not knowing their style. And I think I loved art because my dad, when I would go to class with him, he would teach summer school and he would take me and students would come up and say, uh, I can't draw. I can't paint. I can't do this. And my dad never listened. He'd say, tell me about this. This mm -hmm. is really interesting. Where do, I love the way you use this color. And he would start asking questions immediately. So your and, dad was an art teacher? Yeah. He oh, wanted okay. to be an animator for Disney. That was his dream. Yeah, yeah. And then the reality of I have four kids and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my grandparents live with us and stuff. And he ended up being like Mr. Holland's opus. Yeah. You know? what, what level did, did he teach? He taught high school oh, and he also school. taught yeah. photography. And then in the summers, he would teach all different levels mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, for example, um, I posted this too. Every at the end of the, every year, my dad would let the, his students paint our Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. So oh, wow. in California, like, so we, for the whole summer, we had this tricked out full on art painted Volkswagen. You know, I guess Northern California were a little more hippie <laughs> and stuff like that. So, um, so sometimes I just feel like drawing and I don't really, sometimes I have an idea ahead of time, you mm -hmm. know, what I want to do. And sometimes I just let something come out or I'm like, I'm just going to do blue today. So I think that's my love for art. I don't really, maybe I've sold a couple paintings. There's one couple of my paintings are hanging in this, um, club in uh, Casita del Campo. It's a Mexican restaurant where I used to perform in the basement, it's mostly <laughs> drag shows, and me and Lolly. Mm -hmm. And um, my comedy partner passed away and um, suddenly, and it was heartbreaking. And I painted windows um, for the holidays. And so I was painting that way most of the time. But when I lost my comedy partner, I was so heartbroken. I didn't want to do I couldn't go into the theater with, and so I thought, wow, I'm going to paint a paint us. And we were going to be Polly and Dolly Lama, the Lama sisters, identical twins born a year apart. Cause we were joined at the foot anyway, <laughs> Christmas, you know, New Year's Eve and first day. So um, he had a picture of these two women and, and I drew them as llamas. And then, then I just thought, then I just started painting again. So that's kind of when I started doing painting. A lot of the paintings that you saw was late in life. Yeah. I just kind of thought, I don't want to do theater. I'm going to take a break and do that. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, but that's an important way just to be able to continue if, if you need to take a break and to find other creative outlets. Mm -hmm. That's just a way, a good therapeutic way of continuing to be able to move on. So you're not just stopping outright. Um, oh my gosh. I like, I do something every day you yeah. know oh this is my friend lion okay so lion and mm -hmm. she just recently got her wings and mm -hmm. um so she's like i miss her you know this was like suddenly and uh, yeah i i guess that's for me like art is just you can i always, i was trying to figure out the right way to to quote this you know, for Lolly and I, how you can't have um, heart without art, H-E-A-R-T, or art can't exist. What? But for me, it's just always been a way, like, I have to write every day. I make something mm -hmm. every day. And I, I don't know if that's just that, um, having had a lot of loss, knowing mm -hmm. that that's why it comes out the way it yeah. does. But I do really feel like it's that balance again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, know, yeah. And, you know, and as adults, you know, we have to kind of force yourself to do it more. Cause if you look at kids, cause I'm an art teacher in elementary school uh -huh. and all kids just, they just draw, even if they're more like maybe a sports uh, mentality, they, all kids will draw. And at a certain point, you know, people lose that along the way. Mm -hmm. So that's great for people just to be able to tap back into it. Even if they don't consider themselves an artist, just a way of letting something out again, even if you never show anybody, right. just like, yeah, putting it out there. That's interesting. I did that for like Inktober. You know how they had oh, Inktober yeah, yeah. on there? And I was like, oh, and actually for Lion, this is when she was still, this is just last year. Um, you know, she, um, she works with adults. She was in a program called Bridges where it's like adults um, with variety of like on the spectrum. And like we were both going to be special ed teachers together. And I just kept doing theater. And, and um, so... 
um, this story I do the night before Hallow Scream, I'm like, I used to do it all the time. I'd visit her class and I'd do it and I'd tell it live and then they'd have to finish the story. So I couldn't come out. So I made this little coloring book for her. And actually you can download that for your oh, cool. students. Cause they, oh, it's, it's just written and you can coloring. It's free. It's, I think yeah. it's like, I made it. So it's like four pages that you yeah. can fold, mm -hmm. but they have to draw the last page of what happened in the story. And, um, and I just, did it on Inktober, but yeah, thanks for saying that because some my drawings are so weird. Yeah. <laughs> no, you should do what you should do. You should release like them as like a little book, but like in as a journal. I have one right here too. That, that would be so cool. And actually, I was just thinking about. It. I just had this idea. Now you should release a book that's uh, like it, Leslie's journal, but also so here I don't have a book in front of me. Which but you, one? But when you flip it over end for end, it's another journal on the backs of the pages. For lollies. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. Well, that's we so, have like. Uh, oh, that's so cool. Hold it. Can you hold that up again? That was really uh, cool. Well, this is like. Is the, that ink? Um. Yeah. This is just like pen, I guess. That is so yeah. cool. And then I did this one thing where I was like, okay, I think. Oh, I was doing a different color a day. Yeah. Like I don't know if you can oh, see. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. I yeah, just yeah. did like okay brown. Yeah, do it with your students. This makes you no. Know, <laughs> this is so silly. That but, is so cool. Um, this it's so whimsical. Even, they're just weird. But um, this is blue posy. And then a lot of these little characters. I'll go back and oh, this is the pink poodle bug. Um, <laughs> a lot of them. I'm my my friend um, said you should do like what you said. You know how you have I do angel cards. You guys know. <laughs> angel cards and fairy cards and mm -hmm. i thought maybe i'll just make a bunch of little cards and then just write a story on the back or mm -hmm. saying or what that means but yeah. yeah a lot of artists do they call them artist trading cards have you ever heard of those no oh yeah it's a thing it's a thing yeah well i'm sure i'm going to comic-con again yeah oh nice which one um i'm going to the new york one but oh i should say i'm part of a group called kcc kids comic-con mm. and um what it is is we're a group that goes into comic cons when we're invited to do so and then we do uh, things that are more kid friendly because a lot of comic books are really violent and right. sexual and all that stuff so um we do things like the archies and snoopy and diana leto is my pal um we team up as the female gals. She just did a really great, oh gosh, I'm sorry. Is this, she just did this. Um, can you see that? Oh, that's wow, really that's cool. Beautiful. That was fun. When we're together, <laughs> she does a new poster. She did the artwork for one of the radio play dates, which was the Cookie Queen Conundrum. That's mm. good. I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping and praying that I can, I took the, I'm working on that right now is one of the things I'm doing is I take the the radio show podcast you can listen to. It's great. And then Diane is helping me break up the actual script. And then I'm responsible for doing a bunch of little lolly type drawings. That's the other thing I do as an artist. If I feel self-conscious, the cool thing about all the things that lolly creates is she has a five-year-old aesthetic, right? So yeah. aesthetic. <laughs> so it's like, it's her drawings. Yeah. So, um, so I'm, yeah, I have a lot of little kids' books and things on the back burner that this is not good for ADD. I highly recommend making a list, a to-do list every yeah. day. Do you guys have that problem? Not I, I'm a real listy person. Like the, the joke is yeah. that Adam makes puppets and I make spreadsheets. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I well I, you know what I'll be honest, I make lists all the time, but I keep losing my list. <laughs> like I'll make a list, all these things, and I can't find it. So I'm like, I make a new list, which is actually different from my original list. Yeah. Like, so I write lists a lot. I just don't unfortunately follow them or keep them. <laughs> oh well I have like um oh one of my favorite things, one of the favorite things ever is um when we did Johnny and the Sprites, mm -hmm. I met um, one of my dearest friends right now, uh, Jamie Don Moyer. And uh, Jamie um, and I write all the radio podcasts together. Mm -hmm. And we're a great team because I'm like, Blah! and Jamie's like, let's look at the story. You know? <laughs> and, and when I'm or all I'm like, Jamie, I, I don't know. She goes, why don't you come down here? Like she helped me get, she helps me get the inside out or organize it and everything and she's super creative and wonderful so it's great that you guys have each other as a team you know um and then paul is super you know i think 
for people like me who are always spinning, it's really nice to have somebody who helps ground you. But, mm -hmm. um, but Jamie's been, I have to say, she's responsible for all my personal growth as an artist, because if it weren't for her, like she forced me to be in my very first national puppetry festival. She was living with me for Johnny and the Sprites. And I was kind of toying with the idea of entertaining a thought or wake up your weird. It ended up being that. And she said, will it be ready next year by the national puppetry festival? I'm like, I, I think so. It was nowhere near ready. And we're there. I'm like, Jamie, I can't. She goes, people love things that are half done. And I'm like, no, this is my first puppetry festival. I, these are my peers. This is, they're brilliant. I'm still learning. And oh my God, it was a, it was the worst. Like, <laughs> like I didn't have, um, you know, I made a set that was like all cardboard, but was humid. So it kind of fell apart. And then, um, the people from Spain, their props didn't show up in time. So they asked me to go on a day early with no tech. Oh, and gosh. I fell off the stage oh. because I, I there was like a five foot drop and I needed to come in on the other side. And I thought there were stairs there, but there weren't. Oh. And I had a microphone on and I yelled the F word and, <laughs> and in front of all these people because I was like, ah! And I never say that word, but I fell really hard. And then I came on stage and my puppet fell off my body, my big blue lamb, Velvet Lamore. And then Jamie came on stage and there's me, a lamb, and Jamie. Kind of like she's shoving the <laughs> lamb on stage. I'm like, well, this is inappropriate. It was like, oh, God, it was awful. <laughs> then I did the second one, but the puppeteers were so supportive. I don't know how, and I probably shouldn't say this, but I got an Unima. <laughs> <laughs> for that it's on my wall it's right next to my um richard hunt spirit award it's what i'm most proud of but it was just like but she kept believing in me as an artist like no no get your word out there you know because i still feel like with all these people that you guys interview and all these amazing i still don't feel like oh, i'm not really a puppeteer i'm still learning you know <laughs> well we all are but um, i know but i was like oh your your time and uh you know i know we didn't talk a lot about sesame street you've certainly talked i'm sorry <laughs> no 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 that's okay we, we we really wanted to talk about some of the other things that you do but um one thing i did want to ask you about was is it glop the glo glorious ladies of puppetry yeah could you talk about that a little bit because that's <laughs> that's quite the group in it it seems to be growing a little bit every every year yeah well <laughs> andrea detweiler is responsible for that like she said that on set and i'm like oh my gosh you're right we're the glops <laughs> um oh my gosh like well like well you know pam you know, I mean, she's like, she's been on Sesame Street longer than anybody. I mean, I, I'm sure you're going to interview Pammy. Um, but, you know, there's Pam, there's Carmen, there's Stephanie, there's, you know, Jen, Fran, Fran Brill. Oh, my God, I love her so much. I mean, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And, um, and behind the scenes, too, Lars, the builders, Raleigh. Right. I mean, oh, my gosh you know, interview Raleigh and Connie. I'm just going to give you a list <laughs> of all these people I idolize that are we amazing. Would love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be great. I mean, like Franny is awesome. And Franny was an actress too. Like we, yeah. Oh, yeah. we related on that when we came in because we, you know, not that the other people aren't actresses, but that's just how we got in. That's right. how we started and stuff. So um, every day I'm just in awe of the women that I, you know, work with and stuff. And Lisa Simon, who's in heaven now, was an amazing director. And uh, gosh, oh no. I'm just going to give you a list. I'm afraid <laughs> to n start listing him because I'm, I'm probably going to leave someone out, Louise Gould. I'm just like, oh. Well, and you probably, we, we kind of went right over it, but you mentioned, you know, how you and Fran were sort of kindred spirits because you came from acting. But um, it seems like you and Jerry Nelson had that connection as well jerry really came from that background to the voice acting and and the traditional stuff and seems yeah. like he kind of fell into puppetry mm -hmm. yeah well. and jerry would like i would get to i would get to work early and and i would sit in the dressing room and i would listen to jerry jerry played his guitar every morning mm. and he would sing and i would just like lean up against the 
my door and just listen to him sing. And he was always really supportive of Paul and myself. He's like, always do your own work. Like, this is wonderful, but what's important is that you create your own work. Right. And then Fran and I, I, my audition, it was um, mostly improv. And Kevin sent me my audition for Abby and our hands were up for a good 20 minutes just going off. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was really chemistry and relationship. And, um, but yeah, I love playing the curtain, but I love, <laughs> I love Sesame street because, you know, I was like, Oh my gosh, I get to be the letter five and then I'm a pineapple <laughs> and then a chicken. And, and it's really like this Saturday night live for kids television, because you right. don't know you get to be a squirrel. I mean, not so much lately because Abby's very in a lot, but I love the incidental characters. One mm -hmm. of my favorite characters ever is this penguin named Penelope. I just love her. Yeah. So much. <laughs> I was like trying to get her in. <laughs> you know, she has major social issues, and I love her. She's based on my a lot of kids I know and sure. myself. <laughs> so, but that's that's what I love about it, and it and Sesame Street is really like. A team like right. I feel like if there's you can never n nominate one person for a performance because we can't exist without each other it's so silly it, it has to be the whole team mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I always whenever the the Emmys come out, the daytime Emmy Awards, and yeah. it's like the best actors, and it's like, oh, but there's it it, it only it's works because you guys are the team. Yeah, it only yeah. Works an ensemble, and it's just silly otherwise. But. Yeah, I agree. It's totally silly because yeah, we bounce off each other, you mm -hmm. know, and we're that close, you know, you're right. heart to heart, mm -hmm. you know, and we thank God we all bathe. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Do you want to ask more Sesame Street? No, 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 no. I, I only said that just to transition because I wanted to make sure that we talked about Clop a little bit. So. Oh yeah, those ladies that are, they're just on a daily basis, you know. Well, every... Yeah, and I think it's important because I know certainly, you know, there's a, a four year difference between me and my sister, um, and I always, you know, obviously looked up to to Jim and Carol and Frank and all those people that you'd mm -hmm. see in the the textbooks, basically. But Jane Hudson was the first one. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Like they, he wouldn't. He. It was the two of them. Right. She's yeah. the first Muppeteer. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And um, but I, I think part of the reason possibly that it, it resonated more for me than for my sister was because there are just more males. So I, mm. I think about all the people who are interested in in Sesame Street, but would would have found puppetry now to be able to see you and 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 like you said pam and carmen and, and all those people um it's it's really inspiring and hopefully we'll see a lot more um you know girl puppeteers raising up to the ranks and and yeah and it was the same thing we talked about with sangha a few weeks ago too oh, so. she's awesome yeah, yeah she i loved wonderful. her interview that was incredible but yeah yeah i know it's it's interesting so is Glop the name of the documentary they want to make or something? <laughs> That'd be great. I don't know. Get out is there if you want to. They, they oh, should. Yeah. Or, should be. <laughs> or at least a spread in like People's Magazine or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Do, do a page on there the There was yeah. one, though. Puppetry. The Puppetry Journal did one. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. nice. yeah. As she's a go. Except yeah. for I have to make a, a um, there was a mistake on the one about my cabaret. It oh. was Cheetah Rivera who came to my cabaret twice. I love her. Wow. She's my fairy godmother. Um, not Rita Moreno. I was like, you cannot oh. do that. That happened in West Side Story. Cheetah Rivera. <laughs> Make note. It's Cheetah. She's a queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one last well, one last thing that I wanted to ask you about before we get our, our wrap up stuff. Um, you, you do have this show coming up. Um, do you want to plug that at all and let people know where they could go in and see that? Because I'm yeah. sure there are people listening who'd love to find it out. Yeah, it's called um, Moonlight Madness. It's um, it's about an hour and five minutes, depending on Granny Dot's improv. <laughs> <laughs> Hit or miss. <laughs> um, it's at the Lori Beachman Theater, which is it's a nice little supper club. So it if you're in the city, uh, now this one is a one o'clock. It's a matinee, um, but we're hoping like we're almost we're, we're selling pretty good. And so if, if you buy your tickets ahead of time, we're going to add a six o'clock show. Mm, but great. it's um, not just me in this one. My husband Paul Rudolph makes an appearance. <laughs> He's in it, and then I have these incredible women. 
uh, I'm backup singers, but I really, they're not backing me up. I should mm. be backing them up. Mm. Uh, Judy Glad, she teaches um, at NYU. She's incredible. Um, and she and her two daughters. So Jesse Tomsko, who's a brilliant um, singer performer, and she is actually writing a musical, a folk musical about Anne Boleyn. And she's a singer songwriter. And then her sister, Jenna, who I'm just getting to know, but I went and saw Judy. This is why I see theater all the time. And she had her two daughters come up and sing. I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are great. Do you want to be in the show? So I kind of wrote them in the show. So it's kind of, it's like a, it, it's kind of a cabaret. And then I, then I have a new accompanist who I read the show for the first time last time. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> he's going to run screaming. <laughs> um, but there's, it's Lolly, my Lolly and Granny Dot are in it, but it's, more I wanted to make myself do more just storytelling and try to get comfortable as me because mm -hmm. I'm always like jumping into a character or yeah. you know and I also had to write it where I do sing a lot in it but because it's we have two weeks of Sesame Street yeah the songs aren't as it's not like um what just happened was really a straightforward cabaret. There was lots and lots of singing mm, right. and comedy, but it's kind of like Mary Poppins meets Monty Python. So I think it's like a, it's, it's like cool. an afternoon um, boo lunch, boo <laughs> lunch um, for adults. So you kind of just kind of go in going like not knowing what to expect. Yeah. There's my plug for it. And that that's sounds fantastic. Yeah. October 28th at the Lori Beachman Theater. Come play with us. So it'll be fun. That's awesome. awesome. Great. We'll make sure people. And check Stephen that Jamail, out. I think I said on on piano, he just signed on. So he's great. So um, as as we wrap up. Did um, anybody learn anything from me? I, I mean, all the, so. all the <laughs> like podcasts, like I just was like so. Oh, I just love that you're are just making the world smaller. I know I wrote this to you in an email. I just, I, and all the traveling and everything I done, I've ever done. I, the through line is art, yeah. you know, and puppetry really is, you know, Chuck McCann used to say this and I miss my Chuck McCann. Mm. He was like an, my uncle Chuck. He used to say, you know, when you're a puppeteer, because you can see everything you're directing too. You're like a director and you know how to come in and you know when you're working I do want to say when you are the frame you take everything in consideration consideration you know everybody's part of your big picture mm -hmm. and how you move in. So I think when you do puppetry you are of course becoming a better actor and you're balancing everybody's energy and you know when you write and put something together you're making sure all those lights are shining. Yeah, that's oh. wonderful. <laughs> well, it, as we wrap up, one of the things that we ask all of our guests um, in the spirit of Jim Krupa, and you've shared some pretty great puppetry stories oh with gosh. us already, but do you have any sort of tear-jerking moments of things that, uh, something that went bad besides falling off the stage at a P of A festival? Oh, I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> so that was a pretty good one. <laughs> there were so many things. Well, I just was on a game show last week where it was like where I accidentally grabbed Paula Abdul's boob as Robot Lincoln because I was assisting Jerry and he leaned forward and I couldn't see in the monitor and there was a screw that was coming out of the wood and it went into my head and I was disoriented and I couldn't see and I, I grabbed her boob. And I, I was so awkward and she's like, Robot Lincoln, grab my boob. And you know, we came down, camera stopped, and Jerry was so supportive. He, he's like, well, Robot Lincoln would have grabbed her boo. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, I was like, thanks. It was a choice. Yeah. And then the other puppeteer thing that I think is everything after that uh, Puppeteers of America thing, I had my sh puppet show, Nanny No-No, that um, it's a shadow show that um, Jim Nappy helped me build. Mm. And we spent time on it. it was my my first like contained character that she does violent puppet shows got lost in UPS. <sighs> She's gone. The costume, the everything, like the entire thing just went. They never found think, it? No. Oh. Like it's an Indiana Jones thing and it's never been the same, you know? Right. But 
like I get so nervous about like I try to carry on as much as I can. I hate things, but I think the puppeteers yeah. thing, isn't that the worst, you guys? Oh yeah. Wow. Like, that would give a lot of people puppeteers. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my gosh. But because there's there's people I've heard of that just um even if they have a show in like another state, they'll ship the puppets rather than bringing them carry on or something like that. So oh my gosh, that would that's be scary. I can't I imagine. Can't. No. Oh jeez. Can Lolly say hi? Is that too Please, much? Sure, yes. so that. I'd feel bad if I didn't let her um <laughs> at least say hi. She's um I did meet um Sherry Lewis on a plane um going to a workshop. Uh-huh. I am I am not Lamb Chop. If Lamb Chop and Madam had a baby, it would be me. Hi guys, hi. <laughs> hi. Well, good to see you again. Hello. Just, um, <laughs> had a long talk with Leslie before she got on this thing because she was a little freaked out, you know. I said, you know, they should be interviewing me, but whatever. Anyway. <laughs> I th oh, hello. <laughs> I think Lolly's the first non-human to be on the show. I think so. Oh, yeah. I better go. <laughs> no, it's great. It's yeah. wonderful. That's great. Uh, well, I Leslie, think... thank you so much. Yeah. No, uh, but no, before uh, we yeah. do that, too, uh, is, is there any way people can get a, in contact with you, or how can they follow you? Oh, gosh. All right. So um, on Instagram, I'm Lolly Lard Pop. Um, and that's I kind of like it that way because people only follow me if they know Lolly, <laughs> if yeah. they really know what they're getting into. And it's mostly me, Lolly, Abby stuff, new heart, yeah. you know, I don't show up there too much, but, and um, then Lolly has a Facebook page, which is really great. Cause I don't really have a team, a promo. So I always put stuff on her page today. Um, every Sunday I go, I do Jolly Lolly Sunday. So I'll post something there. Um, I'm horrible at social media. Oh, this is new. We're just starting this. On Lolly's Radio Playdate, we have, um, wait, somebody, he told me what, we are also on, oh, he told me what it was, Google Play. Lolly's oh, okay. Radio yeah. Playdate is on Google Play as well as iTunes. iTunes. But And then um, we have a website, Lolly's Radio Playdate. And um, we're going to start a newsletter so if you want to sign up for the newsletter, you can sign up on Molly's Radio Playdate. You click here. And it's it's basically just going to be a letter of this is where I'm appearing. This is what Lolly's doing. Here's games you can download. Like So there'll be a link for that comic book um, for teachers and okay. parents if they want to download it for their kids for the holidays. Um, and I think that's everything. Lolly's Radio, Lolly's Twisted Tales. We have a YouTube thing. But you know, you have uh, LeslieCarrerRudolph.com as well, right? That's my that's see, I that. <laughs> I'm horrible at social media. There's that, but um, Instagram, I feel like that's the easiest for me because it's just a picture. Yeah, yeah. I love that, and you can like, follow so many fun artists and stuff. So, yeah, thanks, awesome. guys. Thank yeah, you so thanks much. for coming on. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, one of our podcasts that I'm really mm -hmm. proud of on Molly's Radio Playdate is it, our interview with Debbie Spinney. Oh, and okay. It is um, her telling the story about how her dad wrote uh, Merry Christmas Wishing Well to um, Carol. Because Paul and I would go up to their house and like Paul would record them there. Mm -hmm. And that's where I got that, you know, that sweet video be between Carol and Lolly at the Merry Christmas Wishing Well. It's on yeah. my Instagram. Mm -hmm. He loves Lolly. He's so sweet, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but that's a really good. Just for you guys to nerd out on, you know, yeah. the, <laughs> the Debbie spinning because she's yeah. like the heart and soul behind him. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, gosh. Well. Did I just <laughs> run on too much? That I no, no, no. Like no. no. Stories, but didn't necessarily <laughs> do things that elevated the art form. Well, that's a good no, reason but... for us to do another one in the future then <laughs> no, as well. No, I know I what you mean, though. Like, yeah. No, I felt bad because I felt like, oh, my gosh, I was on Nate's thing. I was on Jen's thing. I'm like, they're going to be so sick of, of Leslie blathering. <laughs> No, but, and I, I, but you I mean, ask it's, it's me so different important. things. Yeah. And it's important for, I think, people to see just the artists themselves. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you're going to get questions about Abby, Abby, you know, a million times and, and mm -hmm. all these different things. And we just wanted people to see the, the human side of it. So exactly. I think this was really eye-opening and it, it'll be great for people to see. 
what I like most about Abby, though, I have to say right now, because she's like a puppy dog to me. Mm -hmm. She's like puppy and fairy. Like she's so always ready. She's open and accepting and loving. And I'm always amazed at how many boys like her. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is really, really great because mm -hmm. they want to be kind and they want to be a big, a big brother. Yeah. And they, you know, and I love when parents just let their boys love Abby, you know, mm -hmm. and like, it's, it's, it's so positive and caring. Yeah. And, you know, when I, I'm so grateful that I got to make her a little bit weird and quirky and mm -hmm. awkward and funny and comedian. And she's got a little Barney Fife in her, <laughs> um, but she's such a fun character to be. And like, my favorite thing is just the outreach. Like right. I could, you know, the show is wonderful, but I live for our outreach projects. Anytime, I don't even, I say yes, no questions asked whenever we get asked to volunteer or do that, the, that kind of work, because that's, yeah. that's where you plant seeds of hope and love. How and often does that kind of stuff happen? Um, a lot, you know, like way before the, you know, Julia was on board, which is fantastic, such an important character, but I would go and play with kids, you know, on the spectrum mm -hmm. and, you know, um, and also it started with, you know, forever I think it's always been about but my very first sesame thing I ever did was for Hurricane Katrina right. I didn't have Abby I had a because she wasn't finished yet and then you know the outreach we do with you know Sandy Hook and reaching out to those kids kids that are undocumented like there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we do all the time and there's Lolly is my I don't have to ask anybody's permission yeah. You know, I take her everywhere. She's been in detention centers, senior homes. I mean, I just take her everywhere. So wow. that's the best, I that's think. That's great. Well, Leslie, thank you for all that you do, and thank you for being here. Um, yeah. And as we said, we look forward to being able to talk with you more. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. See, See ya. Bye. Bye. I don't know what to do. What do I do? Oh, we'll, we'll end it. Oh, let me see. Where is that now? <laughs>